was telling me that you're still carrying on with that research work of yours. I'm afraid Dr. Heath isn't in sympathy, Dr. Cortland. Well, that's understandable, isn't it? After all, separating the facets of the brain. <laughs> Rather ambitious, I should call it. Harry's that. research hopes to go deeper than the brain, sir. Into something more intangible than the mind, even. And all that seems to be left is the soul. All right, then, call it the soul. So, so. Come, 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 my dear doctor. Now you're invading my territory. <laughs> well, I suppose I am, sir, but I know that you, for one, wouldn't object if science could be of some assistance to the church. The church is always grateful for any help, doctor. Of course, Harry doesn't mean a word of this gentleman. I'm afraid he's pulling a leg. I should hope so. <laughs> I was wondering what poor gentleman would do if I asked him to elaborate. Oh, I don't mind elaborating. Most of you were in church this morning. If you didn't see that poor chap, you heard him, I'm sure. Yes, oh, ah, yes. I thank you for your assistance there, Doctor. Hopelessly insane, obviously. I don't think he was insane. I think there was only one side of him in existence, and that side was expressing itself. Good heavens, which side? His evil side. Evil side? The man had been spiritually distorted through shock. That explosion in the gas main last month. Before that, he was a fine, solid citizen. Gentle and kind with his children, deeply in love with his wife. Since then, he had undergone a complete change. Until this afternoon, I found him completely reverted to the animal. <clears throat> but look here, Harry, we can clearly understand a shock to the nervous system, but, but what's that got to do with the soul? Well, I think the man had been shocked from normal good into complete evil. Now, when I say he was a good man, I don't mean that he hadn't had a bad thought now and then, or that he hadn't committed uh, ordinary transgressions against society. But after all, that's the problem of civilized man's soul, isn't it? That the good and evil in it are constantly fighting one another? There's a higher source from which the good can find aid in its fight, Doctor. I realize that, sir, but... Of course, the Colonel and I have always felt that a person can be good if they wish to be. And, well, otherwise, if they don't. Look at Jekyll, I simply must get this straight. Well, let me put it this way. Good and evil are so close as to be chained together in the soul. Now, suppose we could break that chain, separate those two selves. Free the good in man and let it go on to its higher destiny and segregate but, the but, bad. But aren't you a bit presumptuous in assuming that there's evil in all men? Oh, but isn't that true? Wouldn't we be hypocrites if we didn't admit that? After all, we've all had thoughts that we uh, didn't want published or shouted out loud, and we certainly have, have had desires that are not confined to a drawing room. Why, as Christians, we admit that man is created weak. That's a perfectly honest problem. Why don't we face it? Suppose we believe that man's soul has not yet reached its fulfillment. Is it wise? Is it right to tamper with the problem until the creator himself has solved it in his own mysterious way? Sir, I... Really, Jekyll, this is very disturbing. Such theories come dangerously close to... Uh... Well, I hesitate to think what the medical council would be forced to say Dr. I... Cortland, advanced theories are always a sore point with the medical council or even with a queen's physician, especially if there's a comfortable profit in those already established. Jekyll, if, if you ask my opinion, young man, this is pure balderdash. Ladies? Oh, I meant to ask. Has anyone read that poem by this oh, new chap, Oscar Wilde? Oh, come on. Would you please read it? Oh, please, 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 please,